Steve Galanti. I'm from uh, North Caldwell, New Jersey. We drove up for the day in a lot of traffic. And this is what I brought, uh, 1954 Kaiser Darren. It has a uh, six-cylinder Willys F-head engine, 90 horsepower. The car is all fiberglass. There was uh, 435 of them built. Uh, known to exist, depending on who you're talking to, probably around 400. It had a pretty good survival rate. Uh, this is number 101 of 435 that were built. As you can tell, I'm from New Jersey with my old uh, license plates here. There's a three-speed uh, manual with an automatic overdrive. You hit about 30 miles an hour and let up on the gas and it automatically uh, kicks into the fourth gear, the overdrive. And if you press the accelerator pedal down far enough, it will kick back into third gear for a passing gear. It's a, the three position top. Uh, the uh, piece from here to here folds under. That's position one. Position two is obviously the full uh, way it looks now. And the third is completely collapsed, uh, somewhat like a Corvette. It was uh, prototyped in 1952. That's why we consider it the first American sports car. Uh, as you can see, unique about it is uh, pocket doors. This car was designed by uh, Howard Darren, or Dutch Darren. He was a uh, coach designer, a uh, very famous one in Paris. Came to California, did a lot of cars there, mainly uh, ones I've seen are the, uh, uh, the Packard Darrens, which have what they call the Darren dip. Comes over, dips down, comes up. That was one thing he was known for. It's got a mechanical tachometer, usual gauges. And one good thing is that it was probably the only Kaiser that had electric wipers. There are two side sets of wheels that you can get for this car, 590s and 640s. These are 640s on here to the bigger tire because I like the uh, larger white wall. Underneath should be all yellow, but it's good that it's black because it doesn't show the dirt. It's still six, uh, six volts. Uh, six cylinder F head, meaning the um, one valve is in the head, the other valve is in the block. Uh, heater and you could see the automatic overdrive which is the uh, relay over there. I've had it 21 years now, found it in New York quite by accident and one unique story about it is that the uh, paint job was a barter job. The guy who owned the car uh, was a well driller and the guy who um, needed a well drilled was a guy who can paint cars so they bartered the job. He drilled a well, and the other guy painted the car. And the car only comes in four colors. Red, pine tint, which is a green, yellow, of course, and red. There is a blue one out there. The blue one was owned by um, Howard, Howard's uh, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, which was in Roseland, New Jersey. She had it for a while. Then it ended up on California, and I don't know where it ended up after that. How long have you been coming to the Bear Mountain Show? This is my second time. Second time. Uh, with, well, the first time for this car, and I brought my uh, 911 uh, about two weeks ago. Okay. And what makes me come back is just the vast amount of cars here. And it's a fun ride coming up from New Jersey. Okay, how you doing? My name is Robert Henderson. I live in Beacon, New York. I have a 2010 Chevy Camaro. I bought it brand new in 09. I did all the work that you see to this car except for the airbrushing and the pinstriping. I've been doing body and mechanic work for 30, 40 years, and I've put $20,000 in this car on top of the 40 grand I paid to buy it. And I did all the chrome work to it. Uh, everything you see to the car is all hand done, and everything I couldn't buy chrome, I sent out and had it chromed. The engine has got a cold air intake, a high performance, XL um, coil packs on it, E3 spark plugs in it. Uh, it's been tuned with a HP tuner. Uh, it has headers on it and it's putting out probably about 480 horses. It's got a sound system in it. 
uh, LED lights on the outside, LED lights in the wheels, LED lights inside the car, LEDs in the trunk, uh, custom stereo system in the trunk that I did. Oh, I've been covering this show since they started. Well, there's a lot of different people here and a lot of, a lot of, lot of nice cars you see. And every time you come, you always see something different at this show. It's never the same cars. You know, it's always something different. And they're really nice cars here. My name is Rick Kerr. This is my 1967 Ford Mustang Fastback. Um, we're running a 427 Stroker V8 with a Tremec TKO 600. Uh, we got the car front to back. We did the suspension, the wheels, and basically this is everything we got going right now. The only thing we didn't do is the body. The body was just clean. Uh, we've had the car for a year and a half. We picked it up in Maryland. Um, belonged to a state trooper named Brian. He gave it up. Uh, I'm very glad he did. Uh, we have a cool arrangement. I go down and show him the car once in a while. We hang out. And that's it, man. It's a year and a half in the making, right here. Have you done all the work? It's been me and my Uncle Ozzy, in, uh, basically in the driveway, every day for a year and a half. Every night, hour and a half. Hi, my name is Ray Florida. I'm uh, originally from Bronx, New York. I now uh, live in Rockland County. Uh, what I have here is my absolute love of my life, except for my wife, of course. My 1967 uh, GTO convertible. It's uh, regimental red, and uh, I just love the car. It drives like a dream. I've uh, done uh, a lot of work on it. The engine is, is a 400, and it's the original engine. It's the numbered matching engine. It does not have tri-power. 1967 didn't have tri-power. It, it was 64, 5, and 6 had the tri-power. This is a four-barrel. I also put a, a, uh, an aluminum, oversized aluminum radiator. I did keep the original radiator, but I wanted to make sure that it ran cool. The uh, transmission is a his-her shifter, three-speed. That's the original transmission. I had both of those rebuilt. Uh, it's got the positive traction on it. I have the, um, the bill of sale for the car. The car went for, I think, $3,600, brand new. Um, it had the original AM radio. I tried to keep as much original as possible. Some of the mistakes I made is, uh, I didn't realize that headlights were a big deal. And I, I replaced the headlights for better, uh, illuminating headlights and I had T3s and I didn't realize that that was somewhat of a deal that you should keep those and I didn't keep those uh, so you know you learn from your mistakes the thing that the guy that I purchased the car from did was he put the uh, Indian Chief Pontiac Indian Chief on the uh, turn signal so I left those on there like I said I had it completely rewired disc brakes all around suspension system I replaced the whole suspension system I gave it a beefier suspension system Brand new shock, brand new springs. Um, steering column was uh, redone just to make sure it was tight. So it's a very tight steering column. A little bit of history on the car. When I, when I got the car, it was for sale in Rhode Island. And I saw it in a magazine that the car was for sale. I took a road trip to Rhode Island. I saw the car. At that time, it was blue. And it was a father-son project that was done on the car. It was an okay project, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. Um, the fellow that I bought the car from won it in a poker game in Rhode Island. So I was like, oh, that, that's, a, that's a pretty interesting story. So at any rate, I, I, I bought the car. I drove it for a little while. And then I decided I wanted to upgrade it. I wanted to modernize it. Uh, which is probably a no-no in the purest sense because everybody wants to keep everything all original. Uh, but I decided to uh, take it back to its original regimental red color. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do that, aside from the fact that it was its original color, there was a guy in high school. I went to Dewitt Clinton High School in the Bronx. And uh, I graduated in 1967. And the year of my graduation, there was a guy who had a 1967 regimental red GTO 
that used to drive around the high school at about two miles an hour just so that we would all just be green with envy. And I was green with envy. But w I got bit by the bug seeing that car. And I said, one of these days, I'm going to get me a regimental red GTO. Obviously, life happens. You have to work, family, and so on and so forth. So it was about seven, eight years ago that uh, I purchased the car. And it took four years to get it to uh, the condition that it's in now. So I had it taken all down to bare metal and had the, the, uh, the entire car repainted the original regimental red. Uh, the fellow who, uh, who owned the car, who won it in the poker game, said his wife, it, he bought it, the car was red, but he uh, decided to paint it blue because his wife liked blue and didn't want, uh, didn't want the car to stay red. And I had it done at a, uh, a shop in, uh, in Clarktown, in uh, Rockland County, uh, Clarktown International. Um, he had the car for a while and uh, he was meticulous about it. As you can see, he did uh, an incredible job on the car. And I did uh, a number of upgrades on it because, uh, you know, I drive around a lot. It's a driver. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not one that believes that you should get a classic car, put it in the garage, take it out to shows, and then put it back in the garage. Um, it's not a museum piece. I bought it to drive it, to have fun with it, to take my kids in it, to uh, drive my family in it, and to go on outings in it. And, uh, and I also take it down to the Bronx. Uh, back to the old neighborhoods. Uh, I'm from the Arthur Avenue area in the Bronx and um, driving through the neighborhood, it really gives me a kick, you know. Uh, I, not a lot of people are left in the Bronx from, from the old neighborhood, but it's just, uh, it's a great time and um, I just drive it like crazy. I'm here up, up here on a, on a great night in uh, Bear Mountain. I come uh, just about every Wednesday night. I see a, a number of great cars and uh, this is probably, in my mind, the best car in the lot.